And it's been this way for it's been this way. His um, his partner.
tax is $50,329.57, ambulance fees $12,171.15, town clerk fees, easy tax, conservation $404.81, cell power $1,002.85, justice fees $11,338, Building permit fees $3,225. Dog licenses $69.50. UC sales tax revenue $32,503.06. Miscellaneous, um, what's the rev revenue? Unclassified revenue $180. Planning fees $150. Venetia WD rents $20,000. Venetia Water and Miscellaneous Revenue, $150. Ambulance Donations, $50. And reimbursement from MAHD, $1,489. Totals, $133,288.60. Communications, Joyce. You might want to let people know where Rob is. Oh, I, wonder I don't know where he is. Where is he? He's on vacation. I know he's on vacation. <laughs> I don't know where, though. We don't know where. Oh, no one knows. Uh, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> 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 well, it'll be easier to track if you plug in to find my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our announcement, cattle offices will be closed this Thursday and Friday. Uh, the 4th of July parade is on Thursday, and I don't see any here. But if you'd like to sign up for it, uh, line up is at the Phoenician School on Thursday at 10 a.m. And uh, you could uh, pick up a float, and there will be a prize for the best float, uh, two hundred dollars donated by Simpler Times. And there will be a bunch of people in front of the old Piccadilly restaurant with a review reviewing stand. Uh, the DMV bus will be here at the town hall this Friday, ten to one, two to three. Town events are listed on Channel Twenty Three, thanks to Ellen, and also posted on our website and Facebook page. There's over like forty events, so we're not going to read them. Uh, and I've been asked by Manny, the new director of Summer Rec, to read a statement. Currently interviews for Shandaken Camp Counselors is finished and all positions have been filled. We are currently accepting complete campers applications with proof of immunization and money for chaperones for trips. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot accept children who are not immunized or have lab work showing immunity, according to the new Ulster County Department of Health law. And if you have questions, call the Elster County Department of Health at 845-340-3070. All campers must be at least five years old and have graduated from kindergarten. Parents are to provide daily bag lunch with water, sunscreen, and towel. Camp starts Tuesday, July 9th, and ends Thursday, August 15th. And they meet on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays up at Bel Air Beach. They have two trips planned. On Wednesday, July 31st, they're going to the New York City Aquarium in Brooklyn. And on Wednesday, August 14th, they're going to Zoom Flow. Uh, by the way, Ruth Gale Realty of Phoenicia is sponsoring both field trips for all the kids attending. And this is a really amazing thing, and we really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. All. <laughs> so hopefully now more kids will be going on those field trips. And the chaperones still have to pay $10 per trip. Uh, yeah, so uh, just a reminder that July 14th is the annual Morton Memorial Library Fair. It goes from uh, 10 to 4. Craft beer, uh, book sale, plant sale, big sale, all kinds of vendors, so stop by. Okay. Uh, committee reports. Ambulance? Yeah. Uh, dehydration, 
and, reg and regular medications. Also, pay, att pay attention, pay particular attention to the signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke in all ages while enjoying activities outdoors. We all think we can take the heat, but in reality, we all walk around dehydrated already and tend to ignore symptoms of these ailments, even when they are present. Please refer to the below, to the below signs and symptoms. Exercise caution in the heat and drink plenty of water. As always, call 911 in an emergency. Heat stroke, a dire medical emergency. Birth, body temperature over 105 degrees, throbbing headache, dizziness and lightheadedness, lack of sweating despite the heat, red, hot, and dry skin, muscle weakness or cramps, nausea and vomiting, rapid heart rate, which may be either strong or, or weak, rapid, swell, rapid shallow breathing, be, behavioral changes such as confusion, disorientation, <coughs> or static. Then seizure, seizures and unconsciousness. Heat exhaustion. Okay. Heat exhaustion. Confusion. Dark colored urine, a sign of dehydration. Dizziness, fainting, fatigue, headache, muscle or abdomen cramps, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, pale skin, Profuse sweating and rapid heart rate. Okay, who wants to repeat them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, watch out for those ticks. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 Stay hydrated and stay safe out there. I knew this was rich. <laughs> Chief, you want to do it? snatch it away from us. So you see there's good neighbor funds that are a lot up to 20,000. That'll be about half of that. You know, because it's kind of the maximum being 45,000, we're coming in under half of that. So just so everybody knows. And it's Yeah, and, and so the, the pursuit vehicle that is no longer fit for service is gonna be, it's still fit for the road, it's still inspected, but it just can't keep up. Um, that'll be recycled into the town offices for planning and zoning. Or sorry, uh, for the zoning enforcer and for dog control. So, so is it your intention then to cap the, uh, the funds from the good neighbor funds at twenty thousand? But there's a possibility that some of those funds will. We're not really at point. that point yet. That's a question on a resolution. We're not there yet. Okay. This is only committee things. Okay. Two committee reports. That's it. Let's <laughs> stay Thank on you. track. Thank you, Mr. Burris. Thank you. Come back to. The Will this vehicle be used to perhaps we'll talk handle about questions on residents? Yeah, we're not going to answer your questions right now. I just wanted to address it because I knew there'd be questions. Okay, so we're not addressing. I, I spoke out. We're not addressing the questions now. No, 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 we'll come back to it in a second. Thank you. We're just going through the committee reports right now. So we were on police. Are we done? With police? Yeah, we're done. With police. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Finish your water, please. Rick uh, is not on vacation, but he was hospitalized last week for four days. Oh. He's back home and okay. he's doing well. Um, hopefully he'll be back in the office next week. 
Um, in the meantime, his son Richard is filling in, and uh, the system is running well. It's uh, way down from 90, 100, 120,000 to 40 to 50,000 per day Correct. because they fixed that big leak on your block. So uh, things are good, even though he's had a problem. Yeah. But he's doing well. Good. Thanks. Well, the next meeting is on the 17th of July. And the library? Yes. Where? 6.30? Museum. That's us. Oh. Okay, um, I just wanted to report that the museum is celebrating its 30th anniversary. We're looking at September 14th, unless there's any conflict with the, the town in terms of calendar. Um, you know, there's going to be music and dancing, and we're going to have a kids' program. So I, th I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We have people who are going to speak on, you know, um, regarding the 12 Hamlets, and um, we have a lot of beautiful new graphics for the museum. Uh, one of the things we're still look looking to do, and I'm inquiring about pricing. I should have had it today, but I had to amend the spec. Uh, we're getting pricing on the rail, the steps, the front walkway. The egress, which is the fire escape, we need a new pad. Um, we also have uh, flashing problems on the roof. And we also are in need of gravel and that back, um, what do you call it? Uh, parking lot. Parking lot, thank you. <laughs> the back parking lot leveled off. But, other than, you know, and it's going well, and the town is really working to help us get going. But the um, anniversary is going to be on September of this year, so we're looking to get all that work done before then. Other than that, that's that a oh, that's right. This no, eighty-one. Okay. Uh, this month we had eighty-one visitors, so our wow. visitorship is like more than tripled what it was, you know, last year. So we're really happy. A lot of people are coming. We're working on our web page. We expect that that'll be up and running before the anniversary <coughs> event. So that's what. Doris, we're doing. do you have uh, a place for a card rack and like other people to put their brochures and information about? Things in town um, we will, yeah, we have some, but you know, we're right now in the process of building a web store with, you know, books that are relevant to the area, and we will have, we will have a, like a, an information rack. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yes, you know, we will. We're, we're getting there. Yeah, I know. You're working <laughs> hard. I know you're working hard. Thank you. Uh, recreation. Uh, so, uh, I'll try not to throw anybody over. Um, <laughs> we're still looking for a park and rec director. If there's anybody that's interested, call Town Hall. Um, we're also looking for a park manager for Parish Fields. So if there's anybody in Phoenicia area that's interested or town-wide, uh, please reach out. And that's kind of where we're at. Once we get those two squared away, we can move forward with a couple of different projects. So other than that, things are good. Park's all very nice, thanks to the Iowa Department. Great. Okay. Yeah, now you can, now, now we can speak. Yes, yes. Is that a microphone? Yes, it is. Okay. Happy to do so. I brought up nice to see you. A lot of you folks don't know me here. My name is Gregory Zaff. I live at 879 Olivia Road, Big Indian. My family has been here since 1958. We've taken over that house. And since then, we've done nothing but improve it. And I try to keep it in pristine condition. Uh, the reason why I'm here tonight <clears throat> is to voice my opinion and in regards to some of the neighbors okay. that are on the road. Excuse I'm really sorry to interrupt you. Uh, talk, talk about the, the car issue they want. The car just, issue? This is just well, about I hope I hope that the new intercept you're buying addresses the speeding issue which is constant yeah. on Alabria Road. Is, yeah, right. This is just for resolution. This is for resolution. Yeah, I'm, I'm not right. familiar with the format of the okay. meeting. Well, we're going to have public comments. Oh, public after. comments. I thought this was public comments. Well, on, on resolutions. the resolutions that we're about to... Oh, I understand. I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay, let's jump, jump into it. Yeah. We want to hear it. You let me know when you want me to talk. Okay. I'll go back to my spot. <laughs> i got plenty to say, by the way. Awesome. And some of the other people here, I'm sure, do as well. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. 
Sure. Well, I, I would just like to see if we can just articulate what's what's the understanding of, of the current appropriation that we're looking so, at. So uh, the good neighbor fund is half of twenty thousand, but uh, like I said, it's half the price. So that was if we were purchasing a purchasing a forty five thousand dollar vehicle, it would be half of twenty thousand allocated. So we imagine we'll use ten thousand for that vehicle. So sorry. Well, so your anticipation is we're really going to tap of maybe 10000 or so right. from the good neighbor funds, but if there's any other balance, that will come out of normal yeah, this appropriations. Is, the, the resolution was made in anticipation of buying a $35,000 vehicle. Chad happened to find this demo vehicle, which is awesome for the town, but we just don't want to lose the purchase. Right. Okay, so basically in this resolution, it's saying it's not to exceed 45000 but that was before he found right. the vehicle that's like half, like yeah. half the price. So since it's half the price, our good neighbor fund will be half of what the resolution said it would be as right. well. So we're assuming that we're voting on something that's going to be half of what we're seeing on this paper. Well, we should, we should uh, write that on. We should write it on, yeah. because that's what we're voting on. Right. Okay. So, Choice. Yeah, twenty-five thousand. Yes, 10, exactly. All right, twenty-five thousand and then ten thousand. And Jack can do that right away. Why, why would you yeah. change the resolution if they, he loses that deal oh. and he can't go yeah. buy the original one? Yeah. Yeah. I think so the, the, the resolution is made in anticipation of buying an expensive vehicle. We happen to find less, so it says not to exceed. So we can still purchase a twenty-five thousand dollars vehicle, or we don't have an exact number. So why are we going to cap the twenty-five thousand? Yeah. Yeah. So we should just leave it at forty-five. Okay. Call it that. All right, then we're agreeing to forty-five thousand. We're agreeing up to not to exceed, but we're still agreeing up to forty-five thousand. Right, but and not more than twenty thousand from the good neighbor fund. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. How is the good neighbor fund? It can be used to make town purchases. Only, only partial parts of purchases. It can't be used to pay regular bills. It can be used to pay for ambulances and police cars and um, uh, capital projects. Museums. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So why don't you just say 50% of the purchase price will come from the Good Neighbor Fund since it was 20 and 45 and now it might be 25 to 10? You know, rather than... Well, it kind of just stops it out on it. It's saying a police vehicle final price not to exceed forty five thousand, and that no more than twenty thousand will be coming less from the good neighbor fund. So it's less than that. So it's less than half already. Yeah. Okay, so we're back to square one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions, comments on the resolutions? Okay. So let's go on to the resolutions. Well, we're going to go to motions now. And I'm making a motion that oh. we table yes. resolution 91 and 92 uh, because the lawyer for the uh, for us doing the sewer project isn't here to answer any pertinent questions. Nor is Rob. Can I make that motion? And but there were no questions. There were no questions. You just went down the line and you asked public comments on resolutions. If anyone has <coughs> questions dealing with these two resolutions, that was the time for them to ask the questions. That was so nobody's here. Was the time. Yeah, yeah, so no one here has questions. Everybody was that question. Was right there. Does anybody have questions on resolutions 91 or 92? Yeah, I have questions. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I feel that um, it's very difficult for this town board to address the complexity of the issue of eminent domain without either the attorney that drafted these resolutions or a town supervisor who would essentially engage them to do that. And I think that the issue of eminent domain in this watershed is one that uh, you know has been has been at the center of much of the conflict between the city of New York and the watershed since at least the mid-1990s. This is a, this question of, of the governmental taking is one that is uh, you know, still like very alive in this watershed. And so when any municipality you know, looks to, to take onto itself the power to use eminent domain to achieve 
you know, it's desirable ends. It's something that has to be done in the light of day and with, and with, you know, as much input from from our from the town's council as we can possibly have. So I just think it's unfortunate that uh, Kevin Young is not here today to talk about this, and that's why I think that tabling these resolutions for the time being would be the responsible thing to do. So. Uh, as it pertains to the resolution, we've been reaching out to the holder of the estate, uh, the law firm that holds the estate. Kevin Young has reached out to them. This has been going on for a year. When we had the uh, vote on the septic maintenance district, it was almost unanimous positive, and for whatever reason, we cannot get up with these people. We tried every avenue. This is really the only way to put in, and what it, it's on Ruth and Beck Road right behind the Slide Mountain Inn, essentially is a municipal septic. It, it'll link into a couple different properties and it's holding back the entire project. We've gone, like I said, through every avenue. For me, I think we've done everything within our power to get in contact, short of me going down there and finding this person and dragging back to Shenandoah. I don't want to do that. Uh, so for me, I think it's, it's well within the town's right and in the best interest of the hand of Shenandoah. I'm not disagreeing in any way on the substance of what you're saying. But, you know, Clearly, these are these are projects in the public good, yeah. and you know, um, if if there ever was a circumstance in, in which you want to consider the use of eminent domain, this is it. You know, there's no there's no question about that. But on the other hand, I, I just think that uh, the issue itself is so potentially fraught with with you know both legal and emotional content that I think it, it needs to be. We really need to have the attorney here to to explain this to us. Okay. I mean, I would feel a problem with that. Yeah, I think we all know, so that's why I want to table it. So. Was there a second? Tina, can we table it now? <laughs> you just asked. We just need to have it. I know. I'm just saying. Unless you want to ask a more question. Well, lawyers,